Our family growing up was really close. My cousin, Fabian, was always supporting me throughout basketball. Every holiday, we'll meet at his mom's house. The whole family would be there. I was still in high school. He was in St. Louis, and he had a girlfriend. Uh, it was this guy, and he was trying to defend her, trying to defend her from the other guy. Whoever this young man was, took out a gun and shot him right in the head. It's not like he was doing the wrong thing. It was tragedy because he was trying to do the right thing. And the whole family went to St. Louis for like the court hearings. I wouldn't be able to make it because I was here. Just bringing up the topic of Fabian, man, it's, it's, it's real emotional. It's, it's I sent my cousin a message for them to show at the, the court hearing. They were just explaining like what Fabian really meant to me as a person. Um, one thing I could, I'm going to promise myself and I promise everybody that I'm going to live the dream out for Fabian. I'm going to do this for Fabian. That's my, that's my big bro. That's my cousin. It's going to live with me forever. I'm 6'6". Six, six. My position is point guard. Well, no gel, obviously, is really built like a combo forward, like a 3-4 guy in today's college basketball. So to have somebody, you know, at that size that plays the point for you really helps you out. He brings so much to the table with that unique size that, that it causes other teams matchup problems. As you know the quote, offense wins games, defense wins championships. You have to have a strong mindset to be able to lock in and be like, okay, now I gotta play defense and continue to do it every day in and out. When you sit there and you think about, okay, who can we compare him to? You know, we always joke and it ends up being like a big free safety in the NFL instead of another college basketball player because who else is 6'7", 220 that can defend so many different people and yet play point guard and handle the basketball so much. Earlier throughout the season, I wasn't as consistent from the free throw line. There was some issues going on there, um, but a lot of it had to do with like the confidence. The person that had been helping me throughout these couple months is uh, a manager named Jacob. Now Jill texted me, it was around Christmas break, and he just asked me if I could come in and help rebound. Uh, he wanted to get better at free throws. And of course, I came in, didn't hesitate. This kid, Jacob, man, he goes to class like everybody else. You know, he could he can be off enjoying college, but yet he's chosen to invest his time into no jail. I think he needed to see the ball go through the net, and then once he saw a couple go in, his confidence built up. Funny as it may sound, he probably looks to Jacob more than he looks at, at the coaches, you know, when, when it's time to shoot. It's his security blanket. One and one now for Eastern, and this is where No Gel Eastern's game has taken a meteoric yes. rise yeah. during the six game winning streak. Leading up to the Minnesota game, I think I made 19 for 20 free throws. There's only like maybe 20 seconds left in the game, and No Gel had to hit six free throws in a row. I missed that next one. I threw the towel to the ground, I was upset. I never thought that me throwing a towel down would go viral on the internet, but somehow it did. I saw it, man. You know, it, it just made me laugh. To me, that was just, it was just showing a lot of love and appreciation and, um, you know, that he really cares. There's no place you'd rather be than right here at Mackey Arena and be part of IU and Purdue. The last time we played IU was here. You know, obviously, I went to, to guard Romeo, outstanding player. I really want to be put on the best players every game. The biggest thing is that he, he's not afraid of anybody. Left side pass to Romeo, lost the handle, got it back. Romeo drives inside, lost the ball again. It wasn't anything personal between he and Romeo. It's the rivalry with Indiana and Purdue. I think he only had four points, I think two for 10 shooting. But even though I was guarding him most of the night, um, it, it also took a team effort. I kind of know what the atmosphere is going to be like going down there. A lot of energy is going to be loud because, you know, a lot of people take this rivalry very seriously. Assembly Hall, where we have fought many, many times before, and these two teams have a great tradition of playing each other. 
He'll definitely want to defend him again, but the thing about it is Romeo saw him the first time and he didn't have success. He's got to know Romeo is going to remember that first game and he's going to see a different Romeo. Carson Edwards, top of the circle. Three on the way. And there's an air ball that leads to a lay-in by Eastern. And an and one opportunity. He misses. All of a sudden, after that great run of free throws by Eastern, he's having trouble again. No gel Eastern guarding Romeo Langford as we anticipated. No one's been able to make a shot for the four for either team. I'll tell you, both teams are playing so hard at the defensive end, it is hard to score right now. Kind of waiting for someone to break out offensively for Purdue. Arms dunks. For both coaches tonight, just find a way to win this one because it is not going to be easy. We got a technical foul call. I'll tell you what, this game has been uh, very chippy. Cool. Well, it's IU Purdue. <laughs> well, you? I mean, more so than normal, in my opinion. The grind continues. Purdue leads. I mean, it's hard to build on that lead in this game. Driving inside and missing, but he gets his own rebound and misses again, and then it's down. Purdue has got to come up with defensive rebounds in these final five minutes if they want to win this game. They lead by four, 337 to go in the game, 43-39. Every player that's made a basket today has had to earn it for both teams. Klein long three. He fell down, but the ball went in. One point game. Scores the basketball, Carson Edwards. 33.7 seconds left, Purdue by one point. Langford goes left, goes up high, gets it back. And Mojel Eastern fouled him on the dribble handoff. So Romeo Langford's gonna get a one and one. Mm. With 23 seconds left in the game. He's got it. Has not missed the night. He's nine of nine from the foul line. Missed. Purdue rebounds to Edwards. Purdue down with the ball. Carson misses. And it's tipped in by Hahn. Purdue 48. Indiana 46. 3.2 seconds. Whips it out to Justin Smith, and here he comes. It's no good, and Purdue has won this game. That's all that matters. So get back in that lab, man. You couldn't throw a rock in the ocean? No, nah, you couldn't. Two oceans. I tried to see at the end of the day. Hey, give me some love, man. All right. Love you. Okay. Hey, good job, man. All right, let's roll. Good roll, Terry. All right, be out.